Today we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Title IX being passed. It's kind of ironic to think of. I was 11 years old and in sixth grade when this monumental change took place. And yet, in all my growing years, as things unfolded, I never even really heard of Title IX or what it meant. I just experienced it. So, at 11 years old, in sixth grade, I was always really interested in sports. I loved playing basketball in my front yard, in the driveway. I loved any sport. We played baseball out on the neighbor's lawn, uh, played football with one of my best friends because her brother was a really good football player and we fancied ourselves as quite good with a football as well. So every sport there was, I really enjoyed. But as a sixth grade girl, I had no organized sports, period, none. I think it was around seventh grade after the passage of Title IX that we actually had a chance as girls to play pickup basketball, but not in a real gym. <laughs> we weren't really welcome there. Um, as I recollect, we would have pickup games in Central Hall, which was in a much smaller gym than normal size and in a building that was well over 100 years old but we loved it. There's something magical about coming out on the court and just feeling like this is my world. This is a world I want to be a part of. Um, in eighth grade, I think we might have had a chance to play soccer, which the high school didn't even have as a sport, but at least we got one year of playing a few games of soccer. So it wasn't until high school that I could actually try out for a team and, and play the sports that I love. And I'll never forget, I practiced and practiced in my yard, and I actually, as a freshman, made the varsity team. I was the only freshman on the, the team that year, and um, I wasn't good. I, I wasn't good at all, but I was excited, and I loved the game, and I practiced all the time. Um, uh, one of the highlights of that year, and again, until I started thinking about Title IX, I didn't even realize this. But it was in the fall of 75 um, that I started high school, I tried out for the team, made it, and our team would have been the winter, February of 76, where we made the state tournament. Uh, well, we didn't go to the finals, but we squeaked in in eighth place as a team. So we got to experience what it was like to go down to the Bangor Auditorium and play in the big league uh, in that massive place. And um, no other team had done that at that time. I think back, that may very well have been, if not the first women's basketball tournament, it must have been among the first because it was only February of 75. Um, we got killed that game. It, we got annihilated by the first place team. Um, so much so, we were losing so badly, like by probably 50 points, that I got to get into the game. And um, I'll never forget after the game, I got in for the last three minutes. And because of my great skills, I almost fouled out, I had four fouls in three minutes. To which my friends in the band told me afterwards that was the most exciting part of the game <laughs> because there were things happening. So um, it all got my start there and I never realized that even a few years earlier, my older sisters wouldn't have had those same opportunities as I had. Uh, fast forward to college. Um, again, I'm not very good, but I made the Bowdoin team, and that opened up a world for me. We traveled all over New England. Uh, Bowdoin had a, a good team, so we were playing at a high level. Again, I'm riding the pine. I'm not very good, but it was an experience that I had that I would never have had but for Title IX. 
somehow that led to opportunities. I think the timing of when I graduated from college was just on the threshold of where businesses were realizing they needed to recruit women to fill management positions. So I got on a, a track because of the timing of, of my coming of age. Um, I was put on a management track fresh out of college. Again, brand new program because they didn't have many women in the leadership ranks at all. And they hadn't been grooming people to, to rise up. I mean, just imagine, think, a woman could have a higher position. Interesting thought. Um, when I graduated from a very male-dominated college, because in fact it was 1972, um, when Bowdoin, right around that time, started letting women come to the college. Uh, again, if I'd been even born a few years earlier, it wouldn't have been an option for me. So it was a very male-dominated college when I was there. Uh, my first job, I started work at Central Maine Power. The electric industry was all male vice presidents and, and managers. Um, no females in the higher ranks. Um, I started work as an economist. Every other economist I knew at the time was male. So I always worked with men in very uh, traditionally male roles. Um, but I think because of what Title IX did is it opened the doors of possibility for women in many more ways. Um, as you think about what the ability to be involved in organized, highly competitive sports does for you, is it helps you build leadership skills. Uh, you learn about teamwork, tenacity, hard work, strategy. And ironically, those are exactly what the employers today are looking for, for skills. So if you've never had as much of a chance to hone those skills, you're at a big disadvantage. And Title IX certainly opened the doors for that. From there, um, I ended up being the first female in every major role I've had as the first female corporate economist at Central Maine Power, the first female state economist, who, and the first to work for three different governors, all of different pol political persuasions, um, then the first president of the Maine Development Foundation that was female, and then finally uh, the first female president of Thomas College. I wonder what doors would have been open for me had not there been this major shift and this opportunity presented. It's a little humbling to think about that and to think about what young women had to put up with um, who were a little older than me. Their path was so much harder and they really charted a much more difficult trail. We just celebrated 50 years of women at Bowdoin, and there were five women honored, one of them with honorary degrees. One of them was Joan Benoit Samuelson. And I was able to interview her about her life as I was trying to put together a talk on what is it that unleashes the potential that every person has. What are the factors that play into that? And for Joan, um, when Title IX passed, she was a sophomore in high school, and she was running track. But she was on the club track team because there wasn't such a thing as a varsity uh, girls track team. So at the time, the longest race she was even able to compete in was an 800 meter. Now this is a woman who uh, with the passage of Title IX, she had so much talent in her. By her junior year, she was practicing with the boys' varsity team as they formed varsity play for girls. Uh, a few years later, she's at Bowdoin, and in her junior year, rather than going abroad like so many students at a college like Bowdoin do, 
she got one of the very first Title IX scholarships to go, as she called it, on her year away, uh, her trip abroad. She went to North Carolina to train and compete with the most elite female runners in the nation. That gave her her start. And it was totally tied, not just to the opportunity of Title IX, but to the funding for this scholarship to give her this experience. And uh, it was only a few years later, 1984, where Joan Benoit Samuelson was the gold medalist in the first ever women's Olympic marathon. Think about how her world would have been different without that opportunity, without this really seismic change in opportunities for women. As you think about what has Title IX meant, it's been a game changer. And it's changed the landscape for what's possible for women, young women, older women, women of all ages, but particularly younger women who can start their competition and their learning and their personal growth at a much younger age and be on a much more level footing with the males that they compete with for jobs, for opportunities. It has truly unleashed potential in half the population of the U.S. because of that change. Potential that was kept somewhat, somewhat at bay for so many generations before us and to totally change the world. Again, I didn't even really know Title IX until I started working in a college environment. And yet, as I reflect, I realize it has played a very big role in the life that I've had, a life that I consider to be very fulfilling and one for which I'm incredibly thankful and blessed uh, with all the opportunities that I've had. And granted, um, it offers opportunity. It doesn't guarantee you great results or uh, the ability to really differentiate yourself in life. But without opportunity, there's never that chance. So I think as we celebrate the passage of Title IX and the 50th anniversary, there's really so much to celebrate. Uh, because without it, our lives as females would have been significantly different. So I think it's well worth celebrating. So let's raise a glass and to be thankful for those who have the wisdom and the courage to make those changes so that the rest of us could enjoy a much more fulfilling life. Cheers. <laughs>